I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they can be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. We're professionals. This is yeah. definitely 100% the first take. You know, I'm so upset because the first take, you might have been able to hear Dakota scrabble away when I clapped. <laughs> and... yeah, John, John scared his cat. I had the wrong uh, uh, setting set up. My grandmother just sent me a picture of a uh, of a green pepper. And Interesting. For no reason as that was going on. Um, At least it's not a picture of a butt plug. I mean, anything can be a butt plug if you're brave enough, John. And uh, you of all you don't people, have to I be think... You don't have to be too brave to use a, a green pepper as a butt plug, though. They're pretty soft and malleable. They're soft. If you clench, you can make them do that little crunch sound. Um, same disclaimer up top this time is that it's allergy season, and I'm going to be hopped up on, on Allegra and Mucinex, but there might be some sniffles and some coughs on mm -hmm. account of congestion. And so, I have to... I am, I am honor-bound to say... Uh, Mucinex and Allegra is literally the opposite of being hopped up. Not the uh, way I almost, take them, John. Not almost the way as I far as possible. How? How do you take a thing that makes you kind of sleepy sometimes and not be kind of sleepy? Are you like mixing uppers with it? Crunch them up. Uh -huh. Mix in some of my gamer subs caffeine powder. Uh -huh. dissol dissolve in water. Boof uh -huh. it. Okay. I see. That's how we do it. It's the only way to take your medicine, by the way. So, so you're 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 up the butt with caffeine powder. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good news. It's a suppository. Anything can be a suppository if you're brave. Like it's it's the butt's really more capable than you think it is. Up yeah, until you that's get to the first turn, and then then it's bad news bears. I mean, the first turn is pretty much the start of the butt. I want to point out, like yeah. you're pretty much there. The second you, the, the, the second you enter you can, the butt, you can play around in the foyer, but once you get in there, you're in danger. That's that's about as far as you've got before you <laughs> enter the turns. Is that why they call it the mud room? <laughs> I hope not. Oh, I oh, really hope definitely. not. No, that's that's got to be it. That's got to be it. Oh, mudrooms. I'm so glad no one in my family has a mudroom. What? They're great. They're like the best room. No, because now, now it's always going to be forever associated with butt stuff. There is. I have a mudroom. It's like yeah. the best room. You, 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 I, it's the one room where you can have shoes on. I'm still going to assume that the mudroom uh, is associated with butt stuff for you just in general. Yeah. But I already I mean, did. What, I already I did assume my corn. that. Okay. <laughs> Behold. Corn. Yeah, Brenda, it's getting close to corn season. Best veg, 100%. I mean, it's good, but like we've kind of over overdone corn a little bit in America. You, we've taken no, it. Oh, it's so good. You could use it for all. You could use it for fuel. You could use it for seasoning. You could use it for eating. You can use it for one of the most addictive substances known to man. Wait, you can use corn. For, wait, what are you? What What do you think is one of the most addictive? You can put fat, what's What's in corn? High High fructose corn syrup. Ah, it's it's like super addictive, and there's no way that you can tell me otherwise. There's you know, I, I, there, there's people who eat sugar and people who just fucking love it, and no, there's no in between in my experience. Uh, I mean, not it's not. It's not good for you. The high fructose corn syrup is not good for you in the amounts that we eat it. For sure. No. For sure. For sure. Um, so with that being said, let's uh let's get into it. We did the butt talk, we did the sugar talk, as always. And mm -hmm. so you know there should be like a, a ripoff of the NPR car talk series called Corn Talk, where it's just farm dudes talking about corn. I'm pretty sure that exists. There's, is that, hang on, hang on, before I do the intro, let's do corn talk. 
Uh, let's see. CEO recess hashtag corn boy corn talk and Apple podcasts. Uh, mm-hmm. corn talk and Spreaker. Um, let's see. A show where we talk. research where interesting we... things we talk about and take and make phone calls and add slices of our own humor. It's like a veggie pizza with a dot dot dot. I I only had the the preview open. It has Dave Long on it? I don't know who that is. There's I'm looking at these episode titles. They're not as corn heavy as I would be hoping. But no, no honestly, honestly, it it's got six ratings. How how yeah. old is this podcast? Uh, Nineteen episodes. Uh, so it came out in twenty twenty. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and throw it out there. Corn Talk's available. If anyone n- needs to interview people only about corn and nothing else, th- there's a vein for you in there. And I would I listen to yeah. the Beef and Dairy Network. So, like, I listen to and whatever happened to P- Pizza at McDonald's. If you've got a weird, specific food thing, I'll give it a listen. Um, I mean, honestly, weird, specific food things are, like, 90... Like, the that's the, that's the like, Wild West of podcasts at this point. Right, like <laughs> cryptid podcasts. There's a billion of those. There's a ton. Weird podcasts talking exclusively about corn. Not many of those. There's. It might do well because I'm thinking about Brian Thompson's podcast and like that. That's so specific and only its own thing, and it's doing pretty well. He just gave a speech out of college. Good for you, Pizza and McDonald's. Anyway. Welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind, where each week we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and did he do it in ca- in character? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Very good. Very good. It was... I, oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not in character. As himself. He did it as himself. Mm-hmm. Um... Completely uh, uh, not, no character whatsoever. I, I I wholly recommend, if you haven't been listening to it, give that one, it'll be, say like live or something in front of it, give that one because it has um, uh, some fun audio stuff that goes on, maybe or may or may not be intentional, I, w- I wouldn't know. Um, some people might have assumed he was getting an honorary uh, degree from there. Uh, it's a really good episode. He does a live call. It's good. So when you when you say some people, Brian Thompson assumes yeah. he's getting an, an honorary degree. Brian degree. Thompson had showed okay. up in garb, apparently dressed as if receiving an honorary diploma for speaking. Okay. Yeah that uh, that that tracks that tracks that there's it tracks. <laughs> there's nothing that I'm hearing that doesn't sound like a Brian Thompson move. It's fantastic. Whatever happens to people at McDonald's. Welcome to Cryptopedia, the podcast pizza. where all we do is plug other podcasts. Pizza. Um, it's whatever happened to pizza at McDonald's, Brandon. Uh, we yeah, know yeah. what happened to people at McDonald's. Oh, did I say people? You did say people. It's it's that Mucinex is starting to k- kick in pretty hard. It's, uh, you know, the, the walls are starting to move, like, look wavy, or that's just my sound coding on the wall. Who knows? Um. Anyway, today was, we're talking... Huh? That was me when my when I had like a hundred and fifteen degree fever when I was a child. Damn, the high or, my, my no, body temperature is 110, 106. 110, 110, 110, Sorry, that's not that's not great. One hundred fifteen kills you. You're dead at one fifteen. I'm I'm mistaken. Above one hundred four is when you risk um seizures. Higher than that, you risk brain damage. And one hundred six is when the staff at the hospital start to panic. So I found that out. Um. Today we're going to talk about Cad Borosaurus, or Caddy for short, which you referenced in one of, um, in which episode was that? Ogopogo? In Ogopogo. I don't know which, I don't know which number. I, I've, I have lost track, uh, of There's that. a spreadsheet, um, at this, in the Discord, someone requested we do a Globster episode, we haven't done one of those in a while, and I had Caddy in the pocket, so we're going to whip out our Caddy, one of the bigger Globsters, um, nay possibly the biggest globster um so it's about time uh, we got to it 133 episodes in um so let's see on the 10th of november 1930 off the glacier off the coast of glacier island near valdez alaska a 20 foot long skeleton was found in ice with flippers 
the remains were preserved for study. In 1934, on Henry Island, 30 feet uh, long remains of an animal were found and examined by Dr. Neil Carter. Um, and in 1937, the first photographic evidence of this creature, a long slender object, apparently the car carcass of a peculiar vertebrate animal, had been extracted from the stomach of a sperm whale at a British Columbian whaling station near Naden Harbor. Um, there's some pictures. This is a good one. This is a, a picture heavy one because I like pictures um, and illustrations starting from the early 1800s. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> okay. So the image of Cardivosaurus here, the drawing. Yeah. Is really fucking hilarious because it's just like, okay, I I'm trying to describe this, but it's like. A fish's back, right? The backside of a fish, yeah. Like with the fa tail fin, it has kind of a shark's front, like the 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 shark's like you know, uh, pectoral fins. A yeah. weird like frumpy looking horse, like a. Uh, it's like somebody mixed Very a horse, horse with a. It's mix. It's a horse mixed with a camel, right? Yeah. And oh, very camel. <laughs> just. Just between the butt and the pectoral fins, there's just a very long section of just wavy line. And then from yes. the pectoral to the head, there's a long neck. And it's it's very dumb. It's it's so it's I'll, I'll say it's very accurate to the photograph of the remains above. But what the assumption they're making is that rather than what they're drawing being just the spinal column of something, they're assuming that that's the whole that's the whole creature, yes. not just the spine. That's the yes. thing. And then they drew. I, I like how they drew it in water with its head above. It's it's. There's some interesting artistic it's, choices. It's a choice. That is correct. You you've nailed it. It's a choice. And you can right away see what assumptions they're making based off the drawings. <coughs> it, it's like Cop they've never one. seen a skeleton before. It's like they don't understand what bones are. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, it's such a weird take because it's 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 so like obviously wrong. <laughs> yeah. Like, you if you look at that, you're just kind of like, nah, that, that's probably not it, right? Like, it's if you asked a fifth grader to draw, like, look at bones and draw the animal they belong to, that's what you would get. I feel like a fifth grader would do better. It's possible. You're, you're not giving... If we've learned anything from Jeff Foxworthy, it's that fifth graders know more than we think they do. Yeah. Or, like, they're preloaded with specific topics to study prior to an episode. So hey. They're, huh? Hey, don't... Don't pull back the curtain. No? No. Don't pull... It's not curtain. allowed. You'll, you'll see... Uh, you'll <laughs> That's see, uh, not what we do on our podcast. You'll see Uncle's <laughs> Willie if you pull back the curtain. Um, starting from the early 1800s, coastal coloni colonists of America and Canada have been witnessing a large sea monster, one they describe as having the head of a horse, humped, and on occasion describe it as furry. Um, in fact, and, and it, I don't recall if I c go into this later in the episode, so we'll, we'll tackle the furry part now. Furry? Yeah, so this is a thing that comes up frequently with, um, globsters, and that's once the, um, the intermuscular, con um, fat that connects the, these, f uh, fibers together breaks down, mm -hmm. it looks like fur because there's nothing holding them together. So you'll, you'll see, um, uh, whale carcasses frequently described as furry and that throws people off, um, mm -hmm. a lot, um. Eventually becoming named Cadborosaurus after an article in the Vic De Victoria Daily Times written by Archie H. Wills involving its sighting in British Columbia's Cadboro Bay. Uh, pictured above so are some drawings of the Cadborosaurus from Victoria Times, as well as a photo of Archie H. Wills, who first started writing about Caddy in 1933. They're and, all uh, terrible drawings. The drawings wanna... are all bad, and Archie looks like... He He's trying to figure out if you could tell he just charted. Like, very, it's... He really does. Yeah. Like... He's shit his like, pants and he wants to know if you know, but can't ask. He's, like... He's he shit his pa pants and is worried that other people have noticed. 
Yeah. Because it's like his, his lips are just ever so slightly open, right? And you can see his teeth. Only the well, top. Those are his he, bottom teeth, I think. So he's kind of like. Oh, those yeah. are his bottom teeth. He's kind of like. Uh, he's kind of like. Eee. And his eyes are open a little too wide. A little too wide. And he's like kind of like looking Punched. away. Like the way he's looking is like. So from his perspective, it would be to the right of the camera. Yeah. Right. So like. Was there like. Was somebody. Did someone have like a little. A little monkey toy or something jingly and they were jingling it for him. (laughs) Ah, that man. Um, If a sea creature around this time period is starting to tickle your spidey senses, uh, that would be because this is the the same year that Nessie started popping off. And Wills also wrote of uh, being Caddy's sponsor and protector. Cool. So... There's no possibility for any kind of ulterior motive or, uh, you know, copying no, uh, someone no, else's no, work. No, not at all. It's just Nessie's gotcha. really gotten huge. And this other guy across the ocean, this journalist. Happens. All, happens to have just discovered one in Cadboro Bay and decided he is the sponsor of this, uh, this majestic mm. animal. Gotcha. Okay, so it's it's just it just happens to be happening at the same time. Yeah, just yeah, it's 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 a complete coincidence. There's no way. There's no 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 premeditation at all. Uh, gotcha, gotcha. Doctors LeBlond and Bofeld, two big early proponents of Caddy, even said that if anyone is to be credited with discovering Caddy and perhaps to be honored by having his name linked to the official description. It should be A. H. Archie Wills. What a name. There's I want to go back to I that I be I, two initials and then a last name. I'm gonna that, I'm gonna change my email signature to that. Uh, that sounds that sounds like the kind of name of somebody who beats a partner. He sounds like he writes like bad comics for newspapers. Yeah, like, he, he sounds like they're red, but they're really not great. Yeah, he's definitely he's definitely got allegations against him. Is all I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah. What those is... allegations are is anyone's guess, but he's got them. Yeah, he 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 uh, sets a little extra money aside in his uh, his uh, budget for uh, foundation and cover up. Yeah. Uh, nonetheless, I do not think the timing to be any form of coincidence. Enter Cryptopedia alum Abominable Science, a book that graces both John and I uh, it, 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 on, on our bookshelves. Uh, who's kind of one of the t- huh? kind of one of the one of the best cryptid books that has ever existed. I'm not gonna lie, like in terms of just like quality of content, it's quali- it, good quality of content, yeah. and it's not. It gives you information, but doesn't dive too deep. Like it's a, just a good. I'm going to peruse this book for a few minutes and just see what happens book. My the chapter on the yeti is one of my favorites. It's, actually. It's a good book. Get get go, go on Amazon and use um promo code uh cryptid. We don't have a promo code. <laughs> uh that's the promo code. We don't have a promo code. All right, text text um Jeffrey uh Jeff, text Jeff uh at Amazon. Tell him Cryptopedia needs a promo code. Uh, his phone number is eight six seven five three zero nine. I can guarantee that. And, yeah, um, yeah. I think someone actually owns that phone number. <laughs> someone does, and I think they like put a message or something on it. Yeah, you can call it. Um, yeah, uh, whose authors obtained an unpublished nineteen eighty five manuscript kept at kept at Greater Victoria Public Library. Wills wrote how the grim news of the time, the Depression, Hitler's rise to power, etc., encouraged him to try and inject a bit of humor in the newspaper. Rumors were abroad that a sea serpent was disporting itself in our waters, and I felt that if the story was handled circumspectly, we might have a little fun. So, I'm kind of turning onto this guy's side now, because he's like, hey, it's, he's having fun. It's it's just like very um, 
there's always there's always an ethical question though about having fun in that sense right yeah but like he picked sea serpent it'd be one thing if he was like let's have a little bit of fun let's do something with like sea serpent's kind of inconsequential unless somebody starts to use it for like to justify you know unless it's used to justify something or unless people start like Unless there becomes a risk of people going out and hunting for it in a fashion that would be you know, potentially dangerous, then maybe call it off. But until you get to that point, hey. So. It's 1930. There's Coke in the Coke. So in WLS, a WLS uh, radio attained the number from a Chicago woman and received 22,000 calls a day. Oh, Wow. Yeah, because, cause, <coughs> like, the important thing... Well, it's really Jeff's number, so it's a lot of people trying yeah. to ask for promo codes. Well, the important thing is it doesn't have the, uh, it doesn't have the area code, right? Oh. Yeah, so you could, like, literally call it, it you could dial it, and it's gonna be a different person depending on where you dial it from. That's fun. Yeah, that's, like, kind of terrible when you think about it. We need more songs that are individuals' phone numbers. Mm, I'm gonna hard disagree with that, but you you do you. Well, like, you could make them, like, make, just pick a shitty company and make their, like, make that their, your song. Just make shit and then make it get popular. And then it, then it becomes fun again. Yeah, but like at that point you've got what is it, a ten digit number, right? How are you gonna how are you gonna sing how are you gonna sing a ten digit number and make it sound good? You can do polyrhythms. I mean there there's a lot of fun and you can do a lot with them. Uh it's just people sometimes try to they shy away from it, but you can really feel the beat. So you gotta love a good polyrhythm. Fair enough. Um, Anywho, I cut you off. Uh, uh, opponents of the Cadborosaurus point out uh, that if the descriptions of the creature, there are no common unifying traits, and that sometimes it's furry or smooth or scaled, and its size changes up to like 40 feet based on its description. Hmm. Um, an article I found also points out how quickly caddy opponents are to claim indigenous artwork is proof of its existence. Um. So they are sorry, caddy oh, proponents, good. not opponents. So here's where here's yeah. here's where we get to the not so great. Um, yeah, this is this is already this is going to take a a turn, isn't it? Um, I wrote this. A ve- I'm alert. This is my first time reading it too. <laughs> it's been this so long is, since I wrote this. This is going to take a turn. Uh, they pointed to any and all bits of rock art. Uh, sculpture and oral history mm-hmm. referring to big predatory sea creatures as references to caddy. Bowfield and LeBlanc, 1995, LeBlanc, uh, but these images and stories reflect all sorts of things, uh, mythified killer whales and pinnipeds, spirit beasts, mythical great serpents, to just lump them into flesh and blood categorosaurus category, ignores their diverse origins and independent backgrounds, plus they don't sound like caddy anyway, the, um, Heidelic and the, uh, mouse hat, uh, people of the mouse of- hat people. Yeah, of Vancouver Island, for example, uh, is said by cryptozoologists to be one and the same as Caddy, uh, yet its name purposely means he who moves from side to side, something that Caddy is categor- categorically thought not to do. Caddy is categorically. Caddy is categorically, yeah. yeah. I stumbled yeah. over my words a little bit, and here's some here's of their, uh, their this artwork. Is... This is, yeah, this is, this is kind of continuing. This is like, this is very Ropen energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, not, well, it's, it's more M- Mokile Membe energy, I'd say. Yeah. Um, than Ropen. Like, it's, it's, oh, I hate it. I hate this, like, whole thing. It's, it's icky, right? It's like, icky. It, there, yeah. The, it just, it just has an ick factor to it that's not, okay it's an icky and they it's icky because they don't know what they're doing when they do the icky they don't know some some people know what they're doing some people know what they're doing i i i doubt that every single person who's like 
doing a racism in this way doesn't know what they're doing. Well, here's the thing. So the people that don't know what they're doing, they're doing the racism because instead of asking the people like, hey, here's some cool art that looks like a thing that I think looks like something else. Can you can you tell me about what your thing is? They're not saying, hey, can you tell me about what your thing is? They're going, I'm taking your thing and making it my thing. That's that's when they do the bad. Yeah. Uh, moving forward throughout uh, our throughout through our timeline in 1947, a carcass was found washed upon Kitlisano Beach. News of its discovery made its way through the newspaper of the time. It was eventually found to be a basking shark. However, an article titled Sea Serpents, Just an Old Basking Shark, um, the body was apparently preserved at Prince Rupert's dock. The article described it as having skin like sandpaper and a head like a horse. Um, so skin like sandpaper would be shark like. Skin like sandpaper much. would be shark like. I want. Yeah. I don't have a reason to have it, but I want shark skin upraiders and to like for making the wasabi but i don't have wasabi it just i i don't know kind of uh, shark skin products always makes me feel a little little that doesn't sound so great to me it's so <clears throat> we put a cartoon on for my daughter that i thought would be fun it was like little kids and they're pirates but it turns out she's terrified of sharks because an animated shark came out of the water and she just started pointing at it and yelling. <clears throat> so it's now my life's mission to um to to wear exclusively shark skin everything. You're terrible. Eradicate all sharks and tell my daughter you can watch cartoons again. That's awful. <laughs> um in 1956, the largest sea monster carcass on record was found at Yucatan, Alaska. Its head measured five feet, six inches across, with a nine-inch eye sockets and set 42 inches apart. Its teeth were six inches long, five inches wide at their base, and the creature's crimson flesh displayed a coat of two-inch auburn hair. Skeptics assumed this was a whale, although the largest known species, the blue whale, uh, oh boy, excuse me, with a record of 109 feet, 3.5 inches, has no teeth as described from the carcass. A sperm whale's teeth resemble those of the unknown beast, but its largest specimen on record is 6 foot, uh, 10 inches long. Trevor uh, Kincaid, also I think that's a cool ass name. I don't know where that's from, but Kincaid sounds like dope, like a comic I book character like or something. I, I've heard the name Kincaid before. Uh, it's just a cool ass name. Uh, anyway, Trevor's quoted as saying that the description fits no known creature. Unfortunately, the 100-foot measurement was an exaggeration, and the creature was identified by W.A. Clemens as a bared speaked well. So, shout out W.A. Clemens. Oh, God. it's That's fucking ridiculous. It, it doesn't resemble anything. And Someone then, who knows something takes a look at it. Yeah, this is that thing. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, that's this This is actually like a super common whale in our area. It looks exactly like that. Weird. Huh. I've seen this before. Look, there's another dead one over there. Doesn't it look so similar? Yeah, like, it's there's like three over there. Yeah. Don't, don't go over there. That's where, uh... That's the... <laughs> that's that's the whale the graveyard. That's the whale graveyard, yeah. Supposedly, in April 1962, near uh, Okuluet, Oku you, 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 I, it's that looks like it's an indigenous name, and I don't think you're anywhere near on the pronunciation. U C L sure nailed it. U E L E T. Pretty sure I nailed it. Yeah, um, sure. Okay. A 14 foot long carcass was found with an elephant like head. The carcass was dragged ashore by Simon Peter, and later, also don't trust, if you have two first names, fuck off, um, and later thought to be an elephant seal. You can't trust someone with two first names. However, I cannot technically, find- Technically, my middle, middle name is a first name. Yeah, but you get a pass because of the turtle cartoon. That's not my, that's not my middle name. My middle name is not Franklin. What? No. 
I just always assumed the F was the turtle. Really? Yeah. No, it's Francis. I hated ah. it as a kid. Ah. Yeah. Uh, you're still yeah. Franklin in my book there, buddy. Okay, cool. <laughs> John <laughs> Franklin. Yeah. Uh, however, I cannot find a scan of this article, so I will raise you this 1933 article titled, Sea Serpent Has Head Like a Horse and Pants Like a Dog. Wait. Oh, okay. Pants as in, like, <sighs> pants. <coughs> Not wears pants like a dog, which then we're going to have to get into a whole discussion about That's, pants wearing versus dogs. Is it just dogs. the back legs or is it all four legs? And I say, it's just the back legs. Are you crazy? Yeah, but, like, they don't use their four legs for anything, really. Their mouth is their hand. Haven't you seen cats versus dogs? They use their front legs for, like, so much stuff. That doesn't count. That's not a documentary. The, the it's a documentary, would have won. and the DVD version has dogs versus cats, where it's the whole movie, but flipped around. The cats would have won. The cats should have won. The cats would have and should have won. They're... Uh, Cats are apex predators. What are dogs? Do okay, so cats constantly clean themselves because it's a, 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 an advantage to them evolutionarily, at least, or because they are such good predators, but they're not l super large. They clean themselves because in nature, if they're covered in a blood, they would attract potentially larger predators. So they're so good at what they do, they ha it's just built into their instinct to clean myself because I'm always covered in blood from being mm -hmm. so good at what I do, and I'm then look at a, a pug. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, cats domesticated themselves. We domesticated dogs. They domesticated themselves. They're... I don't know if this was always this way, or if it's something that eventually became true, but the meow of a cat occupies the same frequency range as a baby crying. So that when well, you hear a cat, it triggers you to want to, like, care for it. Well, that's also, that's also, like, baby animals tend to have the same, like, like, it's just, like, hardwired. Yeah. Um, but cats meowing after, into adulthood, that's totally to fuck with us. That's funny. Yeah. That's, that's funny. Totally, that's totally just to get our attention. Like, 100%. Another reason why cats are the best. I mean, they're lit. Also, they're 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 a little bit of a uh, they're potty of trained. An ass they're assholes. Though, they're assholes, but they're potty that. trained. Fair enough. House passes liquor revenue bill for relief. That's the second article on this, and it takes up. It looks like some. Uh, is this a lot? It takes up a lot. It takes up a lot. Um, I'll read you the article. Uh, Amy Cadbersaurus. <laughs> uh oh wow what was i doing here i wrote i'll read you the article ellipses nope. nope not even a little i just want to point out that i initially thought the witness described the sea serpent as wearing pants the same way a dog does not that it breathed in a panting man okay we already had this caught me back then we, when I wrote we had that too. joke we, we had that conversation already uh oh, yeah. let me see its coils rose at least six feet above me, gradually sinking under the water again. Its head was like that of a horse, but without ears or nostrils, and its eyes were in front of the head, which was flat. I would swear to, to its head being three feet long and two feet wide. The creature's breath came in short, sharp pants like a dog's after a run. Its length, when I first saw it lying on the bay, was fully 30, 40 feet long from head to tail. I would say it was... All of that length as it appeared in front of me. Its thickness was between two and a half and three feet at the thickest part, gradually taping into a tail just like a snake. The skin, smooth, with no spikes or fins whatever. It swam with its head breaking the water. Uh, Eleven other persons, Andrews wrote, including Gigi Parkins, uh, Justice of the Peace, saw the creature. That is... So, it's its head looked just like a horse, except nothing like a horse. Yeah, kinda. It. Oh. Yeah. I thought you were gonna say G.G. Allen for a hot second. <laughs> the uh oh, apparently, uh, upwards of thirty or forty reputable ci citizens had seen it. Um, the person who was talking was Cyril B. Andrews, twenty-one of Pender Harbor. 
uh, and they saw the serpent eat a duck. Hell yeah, fuck ducks. They're delicious. <laughs> um, I, I do want to... Well, I, I always love it when they're like, oh, there's like a very, very credible... Uh, credible witness, this justice of the peace. But they don't talk to them. They talk to some 21-year-old kid. Yeah, it, it's... Yeah. <laughs> right? It's just like, some kid who's still drunk from the morning before telling you his story, and they're like, also, this other guy existed near him. Oh, it was also in Oregon. Oh, it, it, Caddy was everywhere. Oh, this the article was in Oregon. This was Victoria, British Columbia. Okay. Yep. Uh, it's from here that the tale of Caddy would lay stagnant until the early 1990s, so we're getting up to more recent stuff. When Bofield and LeBlanc discovered, thanks to the Royal British Columbia Museum, ethnologist Grant Ketty, Husband's photo in the provincial archives at Victoria. Hubbins. Hubbins. This photo shows the scene at a slightly oblique angle, and it's this one that Bofield and LeBlanc initially went public with. Perhaps coincidentally, I'm not sure, in 1992 was also the year in which Bofield and LeBlanc spoke out about Cadborosaurus at the American Society of Zoologists' annual meeting, um, saying that the animal's uh, phylogenetic affinities couldn't be pinned down in that it possessed both reptilian and mammalian characteristics. They were also bold enough to suggest that their British Columbian animal might have links to marine and freshwater cryptids of the nor northern hemisphere, including those of Loch Ness in Scotland and Lake uh, Okanagan. Okanagan's uh, Ogopogo, I think. Ah, look at that. We're, we're referencing each other's things. It's fun. Where they're, um, they're touching each other. Uh, the tips are touching. They're they're caressing, gently dogging, using coconut oh. oil. Yeah, yeah. Okanagan Lake is Ogopogo specifically. Um, I do want to also point out, like, they have both mammalian and reptilian and mammalian characteristics. What? Okay. What are the reptilian characteristics of this? This like mostly decayed skeleton exactly because like i haven't heard any that are like i think really? what they're referencing is that some people describe it as having had scales outside but, of that i can't think of anything but don't sharks have fish and sharks have scales fish have scales sharks have skin that's really good for um both making wasabi and making pants out of an especially good review uh, of events was provided by Mike Dash in 40 and Times in 1993. Dash I feel noted like I've that read this dude. You read him? I feel like I've read story like articles from this dude. The uh, name sounds familiar. It's entirely but we're 133 episodes deep. The odds are we we've probably read if the word 40 is in it, we've probably read at one point an, an article by that person. Um, probably noted that Bofield and LeBlanc's American Study of Zoologist presentation saw them announce that Cadborosaurus was probably endothermic, predatory, and deep diving, though Bofield had earlier told The Economist that Caddy possessed an elaborate and hitherto quite unknown respiratory system, uh, tubercles lining the animal's back acting as gills to pass water over highly vascularized tissue beneath. What the fuck? How are... Okay. How are they fucking... Where are they getting this information? Nowhere. It's literally just like, bones. They're just like, looking at bones and then, like, inventing a respiratory system. Like, this is, this is like, not kind of, extremely ridiculous. Because they're, like, this is such a reach. Like, even as far as reaches go, this is, like, it's wild. top tier reaching. I'm, I'm impressed Right? Like, the, the imagination on these dudes. Um, so there's a Reddit, a subreddit for um, just writing prompts, and their description of caddies is almost like what, what I would expect if you just posted a picture of it, its carcass there, and just had them start writing shit. The, also, the fact that they're identifying as endothermic, doesn't that, like, immediately discount it as a reptile? Uh, yeah, yeah. But John right, has character characteristics of both mammals and reptiles. Ha ha! You've okay. fallen into their trap card. 
Yeah? What trap card was it? Uh, Pot of Greed. Pot of Greed's not a trap card, it's a spell. Um, uh, Blue Eyes White, um, uh, Magician. What? Blue Eyes White Magician. It's, it's, Why it's, not? It's, it's a new card. You probably haven't heard about it yet. It's a trap yeah, card. Yeah, it's, 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 okay, sure, sure. I mean, you could have just said Trap Hole, but. That's, that's you, literally. Listen, you don't, you don't want, you don't want to go near the Trap Hole, John. Trust me. <laughs> <coughs> It's why the Dark Magician's uh, just always carrying hand sanitizer on him now. It's... Woo, woo. That's where they shit. That's where they shit. It's lined with duct tape like it's where you should put your penis, but it's really where they shit. Ah. Uh, it's so you don't nick are, it on the edges when they... Okay, so the, you, were, you, were making, you were making a glory hole joke is what yeah. you were doing just there. Yeah. Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Dark, we, Dark, Dark Magician went to the trap hole, and now he's just forever on penicillin. It's it's one of those. It's a, it's it's the finger trap hole, but different. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Jumping to 1995, more photos were found by uh, Beaufil and LeBlanc. Suspected as much, uh, the photos had not seen... Uh, they, they, uh, I'm so bad at words. As photos they had not seen before were included in William Haglin's book, Whalers No More. And they indeed found more photos as they were included in an album they came across showing more angles of the carcass. Um, so just all these photos are starting to come out that, that, that weren't previously available. I, I do have to say that, like, that carcass isn't, it's big, but it's not, like, huge. It's... It's it's long, longer than a table. But... It's a table plus a box in length, which isn't yeah, very so descriptive. It's like like what, like twelve feet? Maybe is, 12 to is my 14, guess. Maybe there's yeah. It, it's hard because there's not a whole lot of context next to it. Yeah, um, but like those are those are not like huge boards. No, if right? you assume like, they're two by fours, then you could each board would be three and a half inches. Um, yeah, so so it's you can kind of get a rough estimate. Um, like I just wanna, I just wanna point out, it's not that big. Yeah, it's like, not like if that's oh, the no, this is gonna flip our boat type of big. This is yeah, just a, it, uh, this is why you don't go in the water big. Yeah, that's it's like, like Jaws is bigger. Yeah, like much bigger. That fucker ate the minnow. It did. It did eat the minnow. And then it learned some superpowers and it could control... It, it, it was basically a wind avatar and could control the weather. And that's where the documentary Sharknado comes in. One and two are pretty great. Um, uh, not long after this, in 1995, the pair formally published a technical paper where they would name the creature sitting explicitly, uh, citing explicitly the photographs as critical evidence. Two of the three members of... Whew, um, all right, Brandon, you got this. Amphipacificas Educational Board. Amp, Amphipacific, Amphipacificas Editorial Board. Yeah, I think that's that's close. That's close. I'm pretty sure that's close. I'm going to edit out the first two tries and then I nailed it. Um, Amphipacifica. Yeah, that's how I would pronounce it. I'm not good at pronunciation, though, so, you know. No. Uh, Craig P. Statute and Phil Lambert published as part of an editorial article, Objections... Uh, to the publication of Bofield and Laban's Cadbora source paper, specif specifically stating that we are opposed to its publication as a formal species uh, description for several reasons. Uh, Stott and Lambert went on to note their concerns about the usefulness of the photos, the anecdotal nature of the relevant eyewitness descriptions, and the absence of a, of a holotype. Only one of the three uh, journal editors was fully behind the paper's publication, uh, Ed I, I, Bofeld. I do want to point out, too, that, like, in the picture, it looks like it's covered. Like, like... It looks like it could be covered. I will say I do appreciate the white tarp or whatever they put behind it to add contrast so you could see it better. Um, you really can't make out a whole lot. No, it's a bad picture. Um, now it, 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 it's also yeah. kind of baffling that they don't have that body still. 
Because that's what a holotype is, right? Like it's the a single type specimen, right? Yeah. You have a you have a specimen of it. Yeah, it's a single type of specimen upon which uh, description and name of a new species is based. So they just don't have that. Yeah. Although I guess apparently illustrations count as well. Um, now here comes some critical thinking issues with the two. Uh, after their formal publication, they were recording get Caddy as a plesiosaur in many of the media outlets afterwards. What? Yet Caddy, which is purportedly serpentine, furry, and camel-shaped head uh, with ears or horns, is said to uh, more vertical undulation is about as different from plesiosaurs as you could possibly imagine. Yeah, it it looks nothing like a fucking plesiosaur. It's any it, it, sea monster exists, then plesiosaur seems to be the way they go with these. It's, um, it's so weird. Like, Mosasaur is right there. It is. Mosasaur is so much cooler, too. Um, in fact... I don't know about that, but... They're pretty dope. I'd say they're... I'd say that they're... They're a lateral move from Plesiosaur. I don't think they're any okay. less or more dope. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. We'll, 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 I'll, I'll agree to that. Um, in fact, uh, nowhere in their formal 25-page paper did they even allude that Caddy might be a Plesiosaur. Uh, here, I must give a shout out to my primary source for this episode, Tetsu. Uh, I cannot even come close to going into the depth that they went with regards to their research and breaking down the details of this animal. Uh, but the work on finding, uh, the extent of cryptid building, uh, was pretty great. Uh, they went as far as to find the original books of illustrations that LeBlanc and Bofield comped their technical sketches from in order <laughs> to Frankenstein the carcass into a real thing. Um, being specific, a as they took their image of uh, crypto... crypto it's clip cl Gah, words in this episode are crazy. Cryptoclitis. Um, forelimb from David Norman's 1985 book, The Illustrated Encyclopedia of Dinosaurs, uh, which for me is a red flag in a technical paper, you should consult and cite your technical works, uh, technical works, and not pop books. So that they're they basically like were taking illustrations from like an illustrated children's book showing like cool dino bones, That's and putting choice. that next to the caddy pictures and and huh. saying like here's the thing. Huh. Yeah. Uh, it was a twenty-five page paper. That's so fucking long. Yeah, as a twenty-five write, page paper. I write papers, right? Like, yeah, like it's my job. That's your thing. Is 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 writing papers, and that's a fucking long ass paper. They had some time on their hands. That's a long ass paper for what they had access to. The data set that they had, nowhere near enough. The data set that they had, which was cu like cutting pictures out of books, um. They go on for a while, picking apart the 25-page paper written by the two in great detail. Um, cryptozoologists have argued on several occasions that we should, in an ideal world, do away with the idea that physical type specimens are needed for a species to be named. Huh. Bernard, huh, yeah, interesting uh, choice there. Uh, Bernard Huevelman's uh, father of cryptozoology was particularly big on this idea, after all, they want scientific recognition for key cryptids such that their existence is made official and more mainstream. The debate as to whether physical specimens are needed as holotypes is not, in fact, exclusive to cryptozoology, and biologists of all sorts are still arguing about it. Hmm. <coughs> um, I can which, see that. I, I can see that. I, as for, I can kind of see the biologist's view, but like the danger in that is... In that case, anyone can make a sketch and start trying to push for things yeah. to be real. No, that's it's true. It's just, you know, there's 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 definitely a reasonable argument that can be made there. Yeah. Like like you if you are a good faith actor, you can make a reasonable argument for why a physical holotype might not be needed. Right? Like yeah. you can make that argument. 
is it correct? That's another question. But like yeah. you can do that argument in good faith and not like be completely shitty about it. Yeah. Um, and then here we have, oh boy, I'm getting to relearn what, what old Brandon, past Brandon was trying to think as new Brandon. All right. So up next, we've got the, uh, caddy carcass conundrum. Cause I was like, why do you make this article so big? Probably because past Brandon wanted future Brandon to read it. Possibly. Possibly. That's what I think's going on. It's, this is what I love about my writing style of just writing just going to like a hole and just writing episodes and then just not doing anything for months and then rediscovering things for the first time again um so we have an article called the caddy carcass conundrum uh even when the sea monster carcasses do turn up they tend to be at best ambiguous and at worst unconvincing um so we've got some photographs of some well the original caddy uh photo and then some like heavily heavily um decomposed uh carcass remains to its right um in what has provided to be a highly problematic proclamation eric bofield and paul paul leblanc have attempted to formally name and describe a sea serpent dubbed by them to be cadborosaurus wilsey uh in the zoological literature based on testimonial evidence and photographs of the bizarre naden harbor specimen or nht uh, Naden Harbor thing. <laughs> you want to, we're we're going to start selling NHTs. Um, and <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, uh, an elongate carcass extracted from a sperm whale stomach in British Columbia in 1937. They argue Cadborosaurus most resembles members of the Sauropthos Sauropt Sor. Oh God, Sauroptgeria. There's Terry. I've, I've got there's a, a, a we I we have the number Read of the a biologist. And do you know who I'm talking about? I might have to after this comes out ask for like help pronouncing things. Read read the parenthetical to explain what that means. The group that includes plesiosaurs uh and their relatives. Oh gosh. Oh come on. And might represent a living thing member of this group. This would be the final vindication for the cryptozoological contention. Are these guys... Uh, I didn't do the research. I want to see... Are Paul LeBlond and Eric Bofield trying to do a YEC? Because I didn't look, look into them as individuals, and I really should have, because they are, like, the main... They're the focal point that the Cadborough story, uh, story kind of goes around. Um... As noted in critiques by herpetologists Aaron Bauer and Anthony Russell, it is unclear why Bofeld and LeBlanc regarded Cadborosaurus as a possible sauroptogerian, and uh, it cannot be shown to possess any of the special features seen in that group. Judging from Bofeld and LeBlanc's uh, reconstruction of the appearance of Caddy, looks astoundingly unlike any sauroptogerian given... Um, that live caddies, in quotes, are reported to be furry and have whiskers and are intimidated by uh, Bofield and Blonde to have, sorry, intimated, not intimidated, uh, horizontal tail flukes and move via vertical undulations. A reptilian identity looks remote. Photos published during the 1930s show that some enterprising British Columbians were clearly in the habit of making fake caddy carcasses out of beach debris. We simply cannot be certain that given the, its bizarre appearance, the NHT uh, is also not a fake. Uh, in line with this, marine biologist student Ben Roche recently argued that the vertebrate of the NHT are uncannily like those of a basking shark. One might argue that sperm whales are not in the habit of swallowing basking shark carcasses. However, one could just as defensively state that they are not in the habit of swallowing serpent serpentiform cryptids either. I like that. I mean, that's a burn. That's it's a pretty burn. good. It's pretty good because, like, okay, cool. So either A, it swallowed this thing that exists, or B, it swallowed this thing we don't have any evidence of existing. Which yeah. do you think it is? Yeah, yeah. Because clearly it swallowed something. That's a, th Yeah, like he's got a full beard because he's not using Occam's razor. Anyway, uh. let's jump to... 
<laughs> I liked that joke. Anyway, let's jump to what Caddy may actually be. <clears throat> oh gosh, uh, Mucinex, it's kicking in. Um, some of I'd say that it's not kicking in. I'd say that it's kicking out. It's uh, it's kicking out. There's stuff. There's stuff ejaculating out of my body. Um, and That's it's word choice. Chest mucus. I know it's a weird word choice. It's the first one that came to mind. Um, oh, caps lock on. There we go. Anyway, let's jump to what caddy may actually be. Some of the supposed caddy carcasses have been identified to be sharks. Whale sharks, beard-speaked whales, elephant seals, and a basking shark. Here we will get into the pseudo-plesiosaur idea, something that will be coming up again in a future episode. Um, and here you'll see some, uh, a breakdown of... This is showing how sharks and whales decompose. These are the same images I used for the... Uh, I believe it was the Zao Miro. Um, it was another globster. Um, yeah, so yeah, this is yeah. showing... The areas that decompose on these creatures first and what the resulting carcass looks like on the left and then what the resulting plesiosaur that people think they are 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 on the image on the bottom. It's Um, almost as though the parts that don't have bones decompose first. Yeah, it's weird. It's almost like fatty tissue and things that don't have a supporting structure within them go away first. Strange. It's like cartilage cartilage decays quickly but bones don't huh it's it's weird i've never heard of that (laughs) so the image on the left is a basking shark and the image on the right highlights the areas of decomposition as well as how a carpus may be mistakenly thought to be that of a plesiosaur based on its decomposition yeah and just for like a reference the the jaw of the basking shark disappears the stomach of the basking shark disappears the lower half of its tail disappears and any of its uh, dorsal f- and uh, dorsal fins disappear, basically. Yeah. So Darren Nash writes, I think there's another possibility worth considering, which I don't regard as a slam dunk either, but is at least worth considering. A few years ago, I learned that sturgeons have a rectangular, gently curved neurocranium that has a squared off interior end. None of this is an obvious... None of this is obvious in the live animal, by the way. You can only see it in the skeletonized remains. This got me wondering, could the Naden Harbor carcass be the remains of a sturgeon? Sturgeons I, have a- What a fuck- Okay, a ima- I feel like sturgeons are, are the ocean's, like- the o- it Is water's troll. Like- They're the- They are. They, 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 they are. They're like, hey, guess what? I'm gonna make you think that I'm a I'm actually a fucking <laughs> prehistoric dinosaur because I'm just that's just what a sturgeon does. This yeah. is our job. Fuck you. <laughs> Sturgeons have a heterocerical tail, that is where the dorsal lobe is longer and bigger than the lower one. And it could be that uh could be that the ragged tail of the Naden Harbor carcass conforms to the dorsal lobe sturgeons also have a row of dorsal scutes along the top of the body perhaps this explains the line of oval knobs visible along the length of the naden harbor carcass jesus and uh here's some images um of so so essentially oh how am i going to describe this to people who listen ba- um, basically the tail basically... of the sturgeon would be the head yeah and then you know, you have to imagine the, then because that's where the the upper portion of the tail um mm-hmm. would be, and then the just the rest of the body decomposes. Um, yeah, and there's some pretty good close up images of that. Although, eh, yeah, I'll just say there's good images. I'm not sure how how into it I'm into the uh, the sturgeon idea, but uh, I mean, I think I think basking shark is is honestly the most likely. Like, if we're gonna be completely real, because like. The size matches decently, right? You don't have to... It's not It's not unbelievable, right? No, or even a bear's beaked whale. They, they, they both decompose yeah. the same way anyway. Um, so it's, it's neither really here or there. Um, how did Bofield and Oblon's 1995 hypothesis that Caddy is a post-Cretaceous plesiosaur fare among the cryptozoologists more inclined to regard that Caddy is real? Uh, Bofield and Oblon noted that Caddy was probably one and the same as the Murhorse. Um, so that's 
have fun with that. They're Merhorse, identified by Hualvins and others as a putative new pinniped. Bofield and LeBlanc regarded Cadborosaurus as the same thing. Um, and that's, what? that's, that I'm, I'm, that I just ended at Merhorse. I, I'm confused. There's a Merhorse, they're trying to, this, which I'm sure is another thing that involves, uh, co-opting, uh, uh, indigenous uh, Canadian uh, lore. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Man, I ended uh, that abruptly. Past Brandon yeah, you was did. bad at ending things. I, I did not see that coming. Yeah, no, it came out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, I don't know. It's... Anytime you deal with a globster, it's like... Anytime you deal with something that's mostly fat and decaying, like, and like the the you don't have a guarantee that the entire skeleton and like structure has been preserved, right? Like, yeah, that's I think that's part of it, right? Because like, if you're looking at fossilized remains, a lot of the time you can be like, okay, there's probably a decent chance that most of this is here, right? If it's like a land, it's if it's like a terrestrial creature, it's a lot yeah. easier to be like, okay statistically like let's be real most likely this is everything right there's probably going to be some bones missing blah 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 but like when you're dealing with like a carcass that just rolled up on the shore it's a little different because it's kind of like i have no idea if this is the entire thing yeah well the reason why i love globsters so much because yes every time it's the same thing it's every time there's a it's Hearing how the people in the area actually dealt with it at that time and figure out what the hell was going on with the guys trying to identify these things. <coughs> I mean, I mean, honestly, like, we can be, we can be, like, like, I generally don't like to ascribe malice of intent all the time to people, right? Yeah. Just for, just because, like, it's not, it's not helpful to believe everyone's malicious, right? Yeah. Um... But, but, I will say, um, they probably, they probably just wanted to get famous. They probably wanted to. I'm not, I'm trying to, as we talk, I'm trying to look at any ties between Bofield and LeBlanc to YEC stuff. I didn't see anything. I People didn't, mention, I'm not coming I don't upon think, anything either. I don't think that they personally, I think they would just more wanted to, yeah. They wanted to be famous. They wanted they, they they saw the opportunity for their hometown Nessie and wanted to uh, uh, jump on that. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And oh, did I update the links on this? I don't know if I have any uh, updated the links. Updated what links? Oh, for the jackalopes. Oh, I I checked. I I fixed it. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so, uh, in that case, I'll just get to the plugs, then. There, oh, talking about plugs, okay, the Isley Brothers, um, just came out with a new song with 2 chains, and if you're like, who's the Isley Brothers? They're like the, who's that lady? Like, that old song? They Mm -hmm. just came out with a song with 2 chains called The Plug, and it's actually, like, it's, it's good. Especially for a band where it's like, that everyone thinks is, like, old-timey. I was like, they're still doing stuff. More like the butt plugs. Hell yeah. Uh, I think that's the second time I've referred to a butt plug on this episode. 120 volt butt plug. It is, unless we lost it in the first version. The first two. No, I think we I think we got it. Cause, cause you're, we, good, good, good. We got we, it. We got that. We, we had to make sure sh- that content. We wouldn't want to lose butt plug content. No. Not at all. Um, all right, I'm going to just switch over to the plugs before I make another butt plug joke. Sure. Um, so our website is cryptopediacast.com. Our Instagram is at cryptopediacast. Our Twitter is also at cryptopediacast. Our email is cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. <laughs> oh, that's how you know the episode's over. Um, on YouTube, we're at cryptopedia. Um... We have a Patreon, um, and uh, we've got some jackalopes that we want to thank who support the podcast by paying around five bucks a month, and uh, they pretty much just keep the lights on. So yeah, they, we they got keep, they keep the website running. They uh, 
Oh, also a benefit of um, being a uh, uh, jackalope is um, you get your own channel in the Discord server, and I'll uh, so like this one was uh, suggested by Trash Doggo. I threw out some options for an episode idea. Trash Doggo wanted lobsters, so if you like lobsters, you can bring up the dancing lobsters. You can thank Trash Doggo on the uh, Discord. Yeah. The um also the uh and when when you say when you say they get to suggest that means uh you you're the one who like <laughs> asks them questions cuz I'm usually flying by the seat of my pants. Although I do have a a standing request for Megalodon, although I don't think it's going to be my next episode. Um hell yeah. Oh, and they also get um episode copies. So if you want to see any of the pictures we were talking about you can go on Patreon, open up the episode I hope, copy. I hope I uploaded last week, last time's episode copy. We'll find out. We'll find we'll out. We'll find out when I up the, upload this one. Okay. Uh, we we also thank our jackalopes. So we've got Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Pyerty, Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, Matthew Smith, Bushcraft Kelso, and Lenwood Sharp. Indeed, indeed. And if I missed anyone, just yell at me on Discord and, you know, I'll do my thing. We also, we also, which brings me to Discord. We have a Discord, and you can join our Discord server in the show notes. Um, if you enjoy the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe. We do have, we have some like weirdly low ratings <laughs> uh, for some of the episodes. I think, I think I might have pissed a few people off personally, but yeah. I'm not sure. Who cares? Whatever. If you enjoy the podcast, rate it, review it, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, if you have monster requests or stories, put them in. Megalodon. We'll work towards them. Do Megalodon, Megalodon is uh, Do it's Megalodon. on my queue. Okay? It's on my queue. And my queue is one item long and it has Megalodon on it, but I'm probably still not going to do Megalodon as my next There's, Oh, gosh. I've got I've got to finish part four. I'm just so... I, I, I wrote a couple new episodes because I was working on episode four of a, a, a four-part series, and I'm just so... so I'm just so over it. I'm, it's just too long for me to be, like, sticking my head in the same topic. I don't have that kind of attention span. We might we might want to to consolidate those a little bit, then. There's, or just if break possible. them up. You'll have, like, one one per month. Hope you remember. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh... uh I mean, I, that's... I got this book. I have a binder clip. It's this binder clip has been here for weeks. I mean, Brandon, uh, pretty much any series is once per month. Oh, yeah. Do, yeah, that, quarterly. That's... We'll do quarterly parts. Yeah. Um. Anywho, uh, you got anything you want to want to talk about, Brandon? Uh, yeah, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto Brandon. On Instagram, I'm at Mew2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com. And his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. 